The question everyone is asking, will this be a major snowstorm? Let me give you the honest answer based on what the data shows right now. We retracking three separate Arctic air masses over the next two weeks. The first one is already here. You are feeling it this morning. The second arrives Wednesday. The third comes around January 18th. Each one brings temperatures 15 to 25 degrees below normal. Each one has the potential to produce snow when moisture is available. But potential and certainty are different things. Let me break down what we know and what CA is still uncertain. The atmospheric setup is straightforward. High pressure is building along the west coast, strong and persistent. This forces the jet stream into a deep southward dip across the eastern half of the country. Cold air from Canada has a direct path into the United States. No blocking pattern to stop it. The Arctic Oscillation Index confirms this. Negative values through the middle of the month, then another dip as we approach the 20th. When the AO goes negative, Arctic air spills south. It's a reliable indicator. We re not guessing about the cold. The cold is coming. What makes this pattern interesting is the cutoff low sitting off the southwest. This low pressure system has been spinning over the Pacific, pulling in subtropical moisture. It's moving east, slowly. By Wednesday, it enters the southwest United States. By Thursday and Friday, it is over the central states. When you combine Gulf moisture with Arctic air, you get winter precipitation. Rain changes to snow. The question is where that line sets up. Let me walk through this geographically, starting in the south and moving north. The Gulf Coast has been mild. Temperatures in the 60s and 70s. Some areas seeing rain and thunderstorms. That ends Wednesday. Arctic air pushes into Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama. Temperatures drop into the 30s and 40s during the day, 20s at night. Freezing temperatures reach the northern Gulf Coast Thursday morning. Northern portions of Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia could see a mix of rain, sleet, and snow Wednesday night into Thursday. Accumulation is unlikely in most areas, maybe a dusting on grassy surfaces. The ground temperature is too warm from the recent mild weather, but it'll be cold. That is certain. The Tennessee Valley is where snow becomes more likely. Middle and eastern Tennessee, northern Alabama, northern Georgia. The models are in better agreement here. Snow develops Wednesday night, continues Thursday. Accumulations of two to four inches are possible with higher amounts in elevated areas. Not a blockbuster storm, but enough to impact travel. Kentucky sees similar conditions. Western and Central Kentucky get in on the snow Wednesday night through Thursday morning, three to six inches possible. The Ohio River Valley from Louisville to Cincinnati to Charleston could see significant snow. This is where confidence is higher, Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois. The southern portions of these states have the best chance. Snow begins Wednesday evening, continues through Thursday. Northern areas see less because the system tracks farther south. Columbus, Indianapolis, and southern portions of Illinois could see four to eight inches. That is enough to disrupt transportation. The Great Lakes region stays in a northwest flow pattern early in the week. Lake effect snow continues off Lake Erie and Lake Ontario. Light clipper systems bring an inch or two here and there. Then Wednesday night, the main system arrives. Michigan, particularly southern Michigan, could see accumulating snow. Wisconsin sees the changeover from rain to snow. Minnesota stays cold but mostly dry with this system. Now the mid-Atlantic. This is where it gets complicated. The models diverge here. The European model shows the low pressure tracking through the Ohio Valley, then northeast through Pennsylvania into New York. That track brings a warm front up the I-95 corridor. Washington sees rain or a mix. Baltimore, Philadelphia, rain changing to snow but limited accumulation. New York City, mostly rain. The GFS model shows a slightly different track. Colder, more snow for the coastal cities. But the GFS has been inconsistent. One run shows eight inches in Philadelphia. The next run shows rain. That inconsistency reduces confidence. The ensemble models provide clarity. Out of 30 GFS ensemble members, maybe five or six show significant snow in Philadelphia. The rest show rain or minor accumulation. Out of 25 European ensemble members, 20 show rain or a mix along I-95. Only a handful show accumulating snow. What does this mean? If you re in Washington, Baltimore, Philadelphia, or New York, Don, do you expect a major snowstorm from this system? You might see snow mixing in, you might get an inch or two, but a 6 to 12 inch snowfall is not supported by the data. The interior mid-Atlantic is different. Western Maryland, West Virginia, Western Pennsylvania. These areas are favored. Cold air holds longer. The warm front doesn't penetrate as far west. Four to eight inches of snow is likely across the higher elevations of the Appalachians. Maybe more in the highest peaks. The northeast follows a similar pattern. 
Boston, Providence, Hartford, these cities along the coast will likely see rain or a mix initially, changing to snow as colder air wraps in Friday. Limited accumulation. But interior New England, upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, 6 to 12 inches possible. Some areas could see more. I know this isn't what some of you want to hear. If you re on the coast hoping for a big snowstorm, the pattern doesn't favor it with this particular system. The low tracks too far inland. It pulls warm air up the coast. That's what the data shows. But this isn't to the only system. Remember, we we have three Arctic blasts, three opportunities. This first snow event Wednesday through Friday is just one piece. Let me talk about temperatures because the cold is guaranteed even if the snow amounts vary. Wednesday through Friday, high temperatures across the Tennessee Valley and northern Gulf states will be in the 30s, maybe low 40s. Overnight lows in the 20s. Some areas drop into the teens. For parts of Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama, these are the coldest temperatures in two years. The Ohio Valley sees highs in the 20s Thursday and Friday. Overnight lows in the teens. Wind chill values drop into the single digits. Dangerous cold for anyone working outside or anyone without adequate shelter. The Great Lakes region, you were used to cold, but this is colder than normal even for you. Highs in the teens, lows near zero or below, wind chills 20 to 30 below zero. That S frostbite territory in less than 15 minutes. The Northeast sees the coldest air Friday into Saturday. Highs in the teens to low 20s. Overnight lows near zero inland. Single digits along the coast. Wind chill values 10 to 25 below zero. This cold holds through the weekend. Saturday and Sunday remain well below normal. Then early next week, a brief moderation. Temperatures rise slightly. Don T get too comfortable. The third Arctic blast arrives around the 18th. Let me address the southern snow potential specifically because I mentioned earlier this pattern favors it. Here's what I mean. After this first system moves through, we have another one developing this weekend into early next week. The jet stream remains in a favorable position. Cold air is in place. If another disturbance moves through with moisture, we could see snow farther south than the first system. The GFS has been hinting at this. A second wave of low pressure developing Sunday or Monday, tracking across the deep south. If this verifies, and it is still uncertain, Areas from East Texas through Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia could see their best snow chance, but we are still five to seven days out. Too early for specifics. What I can tell you is the pattern supports multiple chances. This isn't T1 and done. We re-entering an active period. Practical advice. Start with the immediate threat. Wednesday through Friday. If you are in the Ohio Valley, Great Lakes, or interior Northeast, prepare for snow. You know what that means? Clear your schedule if possible. Stock up on necessities. Make sure you have what you need before the snow starts. If you're in the Southeast and this is unusual weather for you, take it seriously. Even two inches of snow shuts down cities that Don T have snow removal equipment. Ice is the bigger concern. If temperatures hover around 32 degrees Fahrenheit, that S0 degrees Celsius, you get freezing rain. Roads become skating rinks, power lines ice over, trees come down, stay home if you can. For everyone dealing with this cold, heating costs will increase. If you use natural gas, electric heat, propane, expect higher bills. Set your thermostat a few degrees lower and wear layers if you need to save money, but Dante compromise safety. Hypothermia can occur indoors if the temperature drops too low. Space heaters cause fires. Every winter, people die from space heater fires. Keep them away from curtains, furniture, anything flammable. Never leave them running unattended. Never use them while sleeping unless they have automatic shutoff features. Carbon monoxide poisoning is another concern. Never use a gas stove, oven, or outdoor grill to heat your home. Never run a generator inside your house, garage, or near windows. Carbon monoxide is odorless. You want to know it's there until it is too late. If you use a generator, place it at least 20 feet from your house. Homeless population and elderly individuals living alone are vulnerable during cold like this. Many cities open warming centers. If you know someone who might need help, reach out. A welfare check saves lives. For those with animals, they need protection too. Dogs and cats can get frostbite. Their paws are vulnerable. Limit outdoor time. Provide warm shelter. Livestock need windbreaks and access to unfrozen water. Check water sources multiple times per day. Let me touch on historical context. Some of you remember the January 1985 cold wave. Arctic air pushed into Florida. Temperature records fell across the south. Citrus crops were destroyed. This pattern has similarities. Not as extreme, but similar. The blizzard of 96 brought two feet of snow to parts of the mid-Atlantic and northeast. That storm had a different track. The low developed off the Carolina coast and moved northeast, staying offshore. Cold air was already in place. That is a classic nor'easter setup. This current system doesn't have that track. It is more inland. That is why coastal areas see less snow. Understanding storm tracks helps explain forecasts. An inland track means warm air along the coast. An offshore track means cold air and heavy snow for coastal cities. 
This system is tracking inland. Model comparison is important. The European model has a strong track record for medium range forecasts. Three to seven days out, it is generally more accurate than the GFS. For this system, the European has been consistent. Warmer along the coast, snow inland. The GFS has oscillated. That tells you something about confidence levels. Ensemble models reduce uncertainty. Instead of one forecast, you get multiple forecasts with slightly different starting conditions. If 90% of ensemble members show rain in New York, you can be fairly confident it'll be rain. If it's 50-50, confidence is low. For this system, ensemble members heavily favor rain or mix along I-95. That doesn't mean it's impossible for coastal cities to get snow. Weather surprises us. But you make decisions based on probabilities, not possibilities. The probability of significant snow in Washington, Philadelphia, New York, and Boston is low with this system. The probability of significant snow in the Ohio Valley, Western Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and interior New England is high. 6 to 10 inches in many areas. Some spots could see a foot. After this system, we watch the weekend and early next week. Will another disturbance develop? Will it have moisture? Will cold air still be in place? These questions get answered as we get closer. The third Arctic blast around the 18th is certain. The jet stream pattern supports it. Whether it produces snow depends on moisture availability. We'll know more in a week. For now, focus on what s immediate, Wednesday through Friday, cold air spreading across the entire eastern half of the country, snow for inland areas, rain or mix for coastal areas, dangerous wind chills. This is real winter weather. If you read disappointed about snow amounts where you live, I understand, but weather doesn't care about our preferences. It follows physics. Warm air rises, cold air sinks, low pressure rotates counterclockwise. These principles don to change based on what we want. The best approach is to understand what s likely, prepare accordingly, and adjust as forecasts update. Check the National Weather Service for your specific location. They provide detailed forecasts with timing, amounts, and confidence levels. Local meteorologists have the advantage of knowing how systems behave in their area. This pattern is active. Multiple systems over two weeks. Some will overperform, some will underperform. That is the nature of winter weather forecasting. But the cold is guaranteed. That's not speculation. That is physics. Stay informed. Stay prepared.